Hi and welcome back to another TechMinds video. In this video, we'll take a look at the multi-band handheld radio called the Abri AR730. Now, I've also seen this advertised as an Aniseku A37, but more about that later. Out of all the boxes I've received, this has to be the most detailed and coloured. But does this mean that this radio is going to be any better than others we've seen shipped out of Asia? Let's find out. Now the included manual appears to be quite comprehensive and fully printed in English. I also found this manual online, although it was unbranded. It did appear to include everything. The antenna, according to the printed specs on the bottom, shows that it supports a frequency range of between 136 MHz up to 174 MHz, and then 400 to 470 MHz. Now the included battery doesn't appear to show any capacity information on its printed label, but according to the Aniseku A37 specification, it's a 2000 mAh rechargeable battery. On the bottom of the battery, we do find a USB-C socket, which means this battery can be recharged via a USB power supply or adapter. Something in this day and age is a pleasure to see. Of course, you can still charge this battery using the included desktop charger, which is also USB powered. There is an included mains adapter, and in mine I received a two pin adapter, meaning if I wanted to use this in the UK, I would need to use something like a shaver adapter. Another USB-C cable is also supplied so that you can charge the battery using something like a mobile phone charger. Now normally these are not included, so that's a nice little touch. A lanyard and belt clip is also included in the box for those that like to clip their radios to their fanny packs. What's most obvious about this radio is the color, a bright luminous green, although this radio does also come in black, according to the Banggood website. According to the serial number label that's attached to the rear of the radio, there are four bands of frequencies in which this radio will transmit. It appears the only ham radio bands supported are 2 and 70 centimeters, while leaving out the 1.25 meter band. FM broadcast and airband reception is also possible, and that's something we'll take a deeper look at a little bit later on. The front panel hosts the screen, keypad, speaker and microphone. And the keypad does feel quite nice with firm rubberized buttons. Now what is disappointing is that the keypad is not backlit, which personally I would have liked to see, even if it was on some form of battery saving timer. On the left side we find the PTT and two function buttons, which of course can be reprogrammed within software. On the right side we find the speaker mic socket, which also doubles up as a programming port when used with an appropriate cable. Now I just use the 7-in-1 USB programming cable that I've shown before. On the top we find the antenna, status LED, an orange button which again can be programmed using software, and lastly we have the on and off stroke volume control. Now turning on the AR730, we're presented with the Abri logo which can be changed to show the battery voltage at power up instead of the logo. Now you will notice the black background on the screen, which makes the VFO frequencies really stand out. I personally quite like the black background and the chosen font also appears to be clearly readable. Now let me know what you think about the display. To change VFO, simply press the back arrow button. To enter into memory mode, you simply hold the top left keypad for a couple of seconds. So there's no dedicated buttons for that, but that's not really an issue. Go through the menu, we find the usual settings that we find on radios like these. Now I come across a Bluetooth section, which is available where you can choose between off, BLE and voice. However, I've not been successful in getting any other devices to detect the AR730. Now this makes me think that this particular model does not actually support Bluetooth. In fact, it's not even listed on the specifications. Of course, all these settings can be changed in software if required, which I'll show you shortly. Now, as well as being able to store up to 256 different memories, entering the frequency directly via the keypad is also possible on either VFO1 or VFO2. Now, dual reception doesn't appear to be possible, even though two VFOs are shown, only one can be used as receive at the same time, which is a little disappointing. 
It will, however, switch to whichever one is active. This is M0 DQW testing. M0 DQW testing on the Ambry AR730. M0 DQW testing on the Ambry A730. M0 DQW testing. This is M0 DQW testing. M0 DQW testing on the Abri A730. M0 DQW testing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over. Ten altitude 3000 feet for the Rush 7. Right, thank you to the airport via LS runway 25 for the Rush 7. I'm copy for the traffic. Thank you. Now, while airband can be received on the AR730, these clips were recorded with an external antenna mounted on my roof. Now, during my test, I switched between the AR730 and an RTL SDR receiver using SDR++ software. Now, on the SDR, the transmissions were a little clearer, but that could be to do with the software's DSP or the RTL SDR simply received better on airband. The AR730 does have a scanning feature which I guess would be okay for memory scanning, but as you can see, it's extremely slow. So in my opinion, would not be good for airband frequency scanning due to the short transmissions that take place. Now, if you were to program in your local airport frequencies, then you could use the scanning feature more effectively, but blind scanning is rather slow and you most likely miss a lot of transmissions. If we now move on to checking the RF power output on the two meter handband, we see an output of around 6.5 watts, and that's from a freshly charged battery. Moving up to the middle of this 70 centimeter handband, we see an output of just over 4 watts. We also see a similar output of around 4 watts on 446, which is the UK PMR frequencies. Although this radio cannot be legally used on the UK PMR channels. So let's hook this up to my tiny SA Ultra to check how clean the RF output from the AR730 is. Now I'm using around 40 dB external attenuation with the radio set on low power. The radio is tuned to 145.5 MHz and with it transmitting, we're seeing an enormous second harmonic, just four dB down from the fundamental. Now, in my opinion, that's really bad. Now let's just see what that second harmonic looks like on an SDR tuned to that second harmonic. I'm testing one, two, three, four, five. Transmit frequency is 145.450. M0 DQW transmitting on 145.450. Well, I think that speaks for itself. So let's take a look at the 70 centimeter band to see how good or bad the spurious emissions are. While the second harmonic is a lot lower, roughly 20 dB lower than the fundamental, just look at those awful sprogs either side of the transmission. They are even appearing on the harmonics. This is M0 DQW test. M0 DQW test. Transmitting on 435.500. M0 DQW. You know, I have a process of when reviewing radios like this, and normally I leave this particular test until last. Why? Well, because it's the most important part. As a responsible ham radio operator, you do not want to be transmitting outside of your allowed frequency range. And with something like this, you'll be doing just that as soon as you press that PTT button. Now, as mentioned earlier, this radio appears to be the same as the Seco A37, so I'd like to ask any of you that have an A37 and you have the ability to check its transmission like this, then please do so. Let us know in the comments below. I guess it's possible this radio has faults, but I highly doubt it. It's probably made like this by design, or should I say lack of design. Now lastly, we'll take a look at the software. 
I'll cover this briefly as there's not really much to it. Incidentally, I had to use the AnySecu A37 software for this. Also, one of the later versions of Chirp supports the A37, so you can use its repeater book import to program this radio, which makes it a whole lot easier when you're programming repeaters. So there we go, that's the Abri AR730, pretty much a dual band handheld radio with air band receive and also FM broadcast receive, although how many people will use that, I don't know. Highly disappointed with the results on the spectrum output, but should we be really surprised? Maybe one day we'll come across a cheap radio which has a clean output. Anyway, until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.